Thanks for still being here. I'll be talking about a notorious problem in discrepancy theory called the Komlosh conjecture and its special case, the Beck-Fiala conjecture. And we will be interested in the algorithmic aspects of both these problems. This is joint work with Nikhil Bansal and Daniel Dadush, and I am Shashwat Garg. Let me start by telling what discrepancy, specifically combinatorial discrepancy is. We are provided a set system, and we want to color each point red or blue, such that each set is as balanced as possible, meaning that each set has roughly equal number of red and blue points. And discrepancy is a notion by which we quantify this balance. So formally, for a given coloring of the points, discrepancy of a set is the difference between the number of red and blue points that set contains in absolute value. And then the discrepancy of the set system is the maximum discrepancy over all the sets. Then our goal is to find a coloring of the points here, such that the discrepancy of the set system is as small as possible. As an example, in this picture, the circular set has discrepancy of 2. And since this set has the maximum discrepancy, you get a discrepancy of 2 for the set system for this particular coloring. But the optimal discrepancy here is 1. For instance, if I make this blue point as red, then this set has discrepancy 0, and every other set has discrepancy 1. A classical result in this field is Spencer's theorem, which says that if you have n sets and n points in the set system, then there is a coloring of the points such that each set has discrepancy order root n. And this is kind of a big deal because it beats random coloring. Discrepancy theory comes up in a lot of places, including approximation algorithms, data structures, differential privacy, etc. But I won't be going into these now. Okay. In this talk, we will be focusing on one special kind of set system where every point lies in at most t sets and t is a parameter of the problem. This is called as the Beck-Fiala setting. Beck and Fiala showed that for this set system, there is always a coloring of discrepancy 2t minus 1. Now, for, to me, this is already a surprising fact, right? Because this discrepancy bound of 2t minus 1 does not depend on how many points or how many sets you have. Even though every point lies in a few sets, some sets can be large. You can even have sets which contain almost all the points. And even these big sets will only get a much smaller discrepancy of 2t minus 1. So this is already quite good. But Beck and Fiala conjectured something that you can do much better, that an order root t discrepancy should also be possible. This has been a very challenging problem, and even in extremely special cases, we do not know if root t is the right answer or not. A generalization of the Beck-Fiala conjecture is the Kumlosh conjecture. Here we have an arbitrary matrix A, such that each column of A is a vector of L2 length at most 1. And now you want to color each column minus 1 or plus 1, such that if you multiply each column by its color and add all these vectors up, the L infinity norm of the resultant vector is as small as possible. And Kumlosh conjecture says that you can make this L infinity norm order 1. Now, it is a simple exercise that Kumlosh conjecture implies the Beck-Fiala conjecture. Okay. So what are the best known bounds we know on for both these problems? Using a technique called the method of partial coloring, which is very popular in discrepancy, you can show that there are colorings of discrepancy root t times log n in the Beck-Fiala case. 
where n is the number of points in the shared system. And similarly, you can show a bound of log n for the Kolmogorov problem, where n is the number of columns in matrix A. And most results in combinatorial discrepancy come about from using this method of partial curving. And like not so many other techniques are known. So surprisingly, the best known bound on both these problems uses something completely different. Banaschek in 98 showed using heavy tools from convex geometry that for the Kolmogorov there exists colorings of discrepancy root log n. And for Bexiala, there exist colorings of discrepancy root t root log n. Now, as I said, Banaschek's proof does not use partial coloring. In fact, partial coloring approaches face a serious obstacle, which prevent it from doing better than log n. So, if you want to get a root log n like Banaschek did, or you want to try solving these two conjectures. Something other than partial coloring is required, and I will tell more in a short while. What is this obstacle, and what partial coloring is? Okay. There has been a vast amount of work on both the Bexiala and Kolmogorov problems, and also on on finding these colorings efficiently. That is on algorithms for these problems. Srinivasan in 97 was the first one to show that you can get a coloring of root t times log n for the Bexiala case using the method of partial coloring, and this extends to showing a log n bound for Kolmogorov. But back then in 97, it was not known whether you can also find these colorings of such a discrepancy in time polynomial in the size of the set system. That is, an algorithm to find these colorings was Not known. This changed in 2010 when Nikhil Bansal gave the first algorithm to find out these colorings, and since then there have been a series of beautiful papers which have greatly simplified his approach and made other applications of partial coloring constructive. Okay, so by this time we know how to algorithmically achieve all the bounds which were. earlier implied by this partial coloring existentially so that's good but what about banaschek's stronger bound of root log n yes yes this is constructive and very recently this was improved to 2t minus log star t and even this is constructive but i mean you don't know anything better than this even improving this factor of 2 is an open problem okay so what about banaschek's stronger bound of root log n can you also make that algorithmic now as i said earlier partial coloring gets stuck at the log n factor so this won't follow from the previous work and banaschek's own proof is in inherently non constructive so it was an open problem for some time whether you could also get this algorithmically and a few months ago we managed to show that indeed there is an algorithm which gives you colorings of discrepancy root t root log n in the bexiala case and root log n in the kolmogorov case so we can now algorithmically match banaschek's bound and this can also be seen to be an alternative proof for banaschek's bound for both these problems now in the rest of the talk i will outline the main idea behind this algorithm and for simplicity i will stick to the bexiala case but almost everything i say will extend straight away to kolmogorov okay so before i go on to the algorithm let's first look at what partial coloring is so partial coloring at a very high level you can think of it as a black box what this black box does is it gives you a coloring of half of the points in the set system and in doing so when you apply this black box to the bexiala problem every set will get a discrepancy of root t but now since you have only colored half of the points you repeat this black box on the remaining half you will color half of those 
and so on. So you need to repeat this log n times, and then every set at the end will get a discrepancy of root t times log n. Okay. So now the obstacle that partial coloring approaches face, which prevent it from doing better than log n, is this. In a certain sense, you have no control whatsoever as to which of these half points will get colored. So it is entirely possible that when you do a partial coloring, there is some set, and you color very few points of the set. Or maybe you don't even color any point of the set. And even then, partial coloring was giving this set a discrepancy of root t, which is a big overkill, right? If you only color five points of the set, it should not get a discrepancy as large as root t. So let's keep this obstacle in mind. Now, our algorithm is this. We perform a random walk inside the hypercube, and at each time step, we maintain a fractional coloring of all the points. A fractional coloring of a point is a value between minus 1 and 1. And the position of this random walk will give you the fractional coloring of the points. So initially, this fractional coloring is set to 0. And you update it according to the update steps taken by the random walk. Then the algorithm stops, and you land at a vertex of the hypercube, which is an all minus 1 plus 1 point. You will get a full coloring of all the points in the set system. And you take this to be your solution. And you take care never to step outside of the hypercube. So your random walk is always inside the hypercube. OK. So here, I'm going to use xk to refer to the position of the random walk at time step k, which is also the fractional coloring of all the points at time step k. And delta x is going to be the, the update step you take. Okay. Now, previous algorithms for discrepancy, which made partial coloring constructive, they also performed a similar random walk. And what they did was, morally, each of these update steps was chosen uniformly at random. But now, to get over the obstacle that partial coloring had, we demand that our update steps, they satisfy some special properties instead of being totally random. So what are these properties that we want our update steps to satisfy? The first is that for big sets, which have more than 100 t points in them, they should get a discrepancy of 0. Now, you cannot have too many big sets. Since each point lies in t sets, and a big set is defined as containing 100 t points, you can only have at most n by 100 big sets. And giving zero discrepancy to such few sets is OK. It's possible to do. And what this tells you is that from now on, you only need to worry about sets of size smaller than 100t. Okay. So now this is the main idea. To get over the obstacle that partial coloring had, we demand that our update steps satisfy a second property, which we call the proportional discrepancy property. Roughly, it says that the square of the discrepancy is bounded by how much of the points are being colored. So to define it more precisely, let me make two definitions. We define the energy of a set S to be the squared L2 norm of the fractional coloring of all the points in that set at that time. So just imagine this to be a proxy for how many points in that set have been colored till now. Because if a point is colored, it contributes one here. The second definition is of energy injected into a set at some time step k of the random walk. This is defined as the squared length of the updates you are making for the points in that set. 
take this to mean how much of the points you are coloring in that particular time step. And keep in mind that this energy injected and energy, these are two different things. Okay. So the proportional discrepancy property says that at every time step, square of the discrepancy is bounded by the energy injected. And this helps us to get over the obstacle that partial coloring had. Because if you color few points of a set, which means the energy injected is small, then you also get a correspondingly smaller discrepancy. Now, so what does this property provide us with? At the end of the algorithm, the square discrepancy of a set is bounded by the energy injected at step one plus energy injected at step two and so on. Call this to be the total energy injected into a set. So square discrepancy is bounded by total energy injected. And let's assume for now that this total energy injected equals to the energy of a set at the end of the algorithm. Now at the end of the algorithm, each xi is minus one or one. So this energy is equal to the size of the set. And we, I said that you only need to worry about sets of size smaller than 100p. So then the energy of a set is smaller than 100p. And what this gives you is that square discrepancy is bounded by total energy injected, which we are assuming for now equals the energy of a set at the end of the algorithm, which is at most 100p. So then you get that the discrepancy of a set is order root t and things are great. But this assumption of total energy injected being equal to the final energy might be far from the truth. As an example of why this might happen, you start your random walk at the origin, you take an update step here, and after some more update steps, you come back at the origin. Now, when you're back at the origin, each fractional color, x of i, is, is zero. So your energy at this time point is zero. But the total energy injected now, which is energy injected here plus energy injected here plus here is non-zero. So then if I do this moving back and forth around the origin many times, I can make the total energy injected much, much larger than the final energy. And this is bad for us. So to prevent this, we demand a third property from our update steps, which will ensure that this total energy injected does not become too large it roughly stays about twice of the final energy. And once we have this, we get that the total energy injected will be at most 200T. And then following the same strategy, a discrepancy over set will be order root T. So things are still good. So the main challenging part now is how do you find these update steps, which satisfy all these properties simultaneously for all the sets? It is not even clear how to argue that these update steps even exist. So to help us in finding these, we write a semi-definite relaxation. Here the variables of the SDP are vectors ui, which are a relaxation for the scalar updates delta xi you wanted. And these constraints of the SDP now capture all the prop properties you wanted from the update steps. Okay, just solve this SDP, it will give you a vector solution, and hopefully it will guide us as to what the scalar updates should then be like. But there's a problem in that the all zeros vector satisfies all these constraints. So to avoid the all zero solution, I just ask for a solution of maximum value. So if I can show that this SDP has a non-zero value, that is, it has a value larger than zero, then we solve this SDP. We get a non-trivial solution, which gives us vectors UI, which do satisfy all our properties. And then I'm just going to use the standard SDP rounding technique and project these vectors UI on a random direction. This gives me scalar updates, which in expectation,
satisfy all the properties I wanted. So, and, and I do my random walk with these. So in expectation, I'm still okay. So then the main challenging part in the proof is to show that this SDP indeed has a value larger than zero. And to do this, we look at the dual of the SDP and argue that any feasible solution of the dual has a value larger than zero. And then by strong duality, we'll also get this from for our primal SDP. And once you have that, have this, you know that in expectation, the discrepancy over set is order root t, which is the conjectured bound. But you need this to hold for all sets simultaneously. So to get a high probability bound, we will lose another factor of root log n. And then every set will get a discrepancy of root t root log n simultaneously with high probability. So this finishes the outline of the proof and the Komlosh case also follows similarly. And you can also interpret it as a general method in discrepancy and it helps to give improved bound in many other problems in discrepancy. So thank you. Okay, so the way originally partial coloring was given, there you have no control as to which of the half points will get colored. So if you take this to be the black box, then you can very simply construct examples where you'll get a lo log n factor. But the algorithm which made partial coloring constructive, we don't really know if they actually fail or not. But yeah, it, people believe that they fail because there's no reason that you'll get some control as to which of the half points will get colored. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yes, that's one way to go. But then again, it's hard to argue because for each side, you'll need to specify that this side wants to go in this direction, this side wants to go in this direction. Yeah. 